Hey guys, so today I want to talk about the next position we have in our portfolio and this is Canadian National Railway. I also want to talk about why I bought Canadian National Railway in Canadian dollars and not in US dollars all through its trading on the NICE, I think, and on the TSE. So I could have bought it in US dollars, but I did buy it in Canadian dollars. And that's the same with Canadian Pacific Railway. And I would say let's jump straight into their investor relations. Because as you've probably noticed from the American Tower introduction video, I mainly focus on the investor relation page when I consider buying a certain stock. Hey guys, so here we are at the Canadian National Investor Relation website. And as you can see, Canadian National is going to combine with Kansas City Southern. And we're gonna talk about that in a minute, but before we do that, I wanna explain to you for those who do not know what Canadian National Railway is doing what they are doing and as given in their name they are a railway company so they own the tracks of the railway and they operate the railway with their trains and by doing that they ship cargo from A to B we are gonna have a look into the Canadian National Railway 2020 Investor Factbook because I personally, I always look to the factbook because I tend to believe that spending hours on hours on reading like what's their income and blah, 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 net profit, rate of return, margin, whatever, is more or less useless. I personally look on a few numbers to check whether I want to invest or not. And I'm going to go through that process with you guys today. Moving forward. Canadian National has shipped around 14.9 billion in 2019. That has been decreased slightly, I think around 1.1 billion in 2020. They have an adjusted rate on invested capital of around 15.1% and they have a free cash flow of around 2 billion. And free cash flow is for me personally the most important thing after revenue growth. And there are two reasons for that. Revenue growth is you can quite easily with financial engineering grow the earnings per share. For example, Apple used to do that. Their revenue declined, but their earnings per share increased. And that was due to the fact that they have a massive share buyback program. And revenue is not so easy to financial engineer as for example, earnings per share. And the other reason is why I'm looking for free cash flow is cause free cash flow gives us as investors the opportunity to receive dividends from the company or allows the company to buy back stocks. I personally like it when they're buying back stocks, not as much as when they're paying dividends. And I'll explain that to you in a second. As you can see here, the red one is Canadian National and that's on the TSX, on the Canadian um, stock market, uh, stock exchange, sorry. Of course, Canadian National is, as I've mentioned earlier, listed on the Canadian stock exchange. I'm not sure whether it is Montreal or Toronto. I think it's Toronto, to be honest. Um, and it's also listed on the NICE in New York. And 
in Toronto, it's listed in Canadian dollars and in New York, it's obviously listed in US dollars. And as you can see here, the Canadian dollar listening has outperformed the US dollar listening. And this is due to um, currency effects. Down here, you can see that they have spent the majority of their money in the recent years of the free cash flow, exactly 77% of the adjusted net income returned to shareholders in 2019 by buying back stocks. I, I do not have any problem with a company buying back stocks. The only thing that annoys me is if they buy back stocks by using depth. And that's something Canadian National Railway did. And that annoys me a bit. Because I think all through interest rates are down quite a lot um, currently. You should not borrow money to increase shareholder value by buying back stocks. Borrow money to build a new railway or to build a new harbor or whatever. But not to buy back stocks. That's not good. It's going to fail over time. But let's go through the investor factbook. This is the Canadian National Railway track line. They have around 20,000 miles. They have in invested $3.9 billion in keeping that track alive and making sure that their trains are running, that the equipment is all right. And this is investment I like because it gives the company the opportunity to perform over time. You can see a few metrics. And that's the point. I do not really look at those metrics given here. The only thing that I look is total revenue. And that increased over time. It decreased slightly in 2016. But that's all right because over the long term it increases. And then the other thing, as I've mentioned earlier, is free cash flow. I think here we can see it that the free cash flow was around $2.5 billion, but they've spent around $2 billion in share repurchase program in 2018. Now we go back, and it was the same in 2019 or all the other years. In total, they have returned $3.333 billion to the shareholder means they had to take that to buy back those shares. And that's again is ridiculously stupid. Here's the market overview. So in total, they had around 15 billion in revenue. And that was given by different um, industries. And we will go through them now. So they had petrol and chemicals, they had metal and minerals, forest products, Coal, grain and fur, fur, nit, fur nit, I, I, I can't pronounce that word. And intermodal and also automotive. And all of that data now given, I'm not really having a look at that, to be honest. Let's go back to the Canadian National Kansas City Southern Deal. Because they will pay around $33.6 billion in total for Kansas City Southern. And the reason why they want to do this is because they want to create the network for the 21st century. Because interest rates are super low nowadays. So it's quite easy to borrow money all through. It's a ridiculously high price. And as Warren Buffett said in the 2020 Berkshire Hathaway annual meeting, he would not buy Canadian uh, Kansas City Southern for that price. Because back in the days, he bought burning in Santa Fe for a smaller price than the 33.6 billion Canadian national is now paying for Kansas City Southern. All through Kansas City Southern is way smaller, way, way smaller railway carrier than burning in Santa Fe. So what's the idea behind all of that? As you can see, the red line are the 20,000 miles of railway owned by Canadian national. And the yellow lines down there going to Mexico are the ones owned by Kansas City Southern. So that will be the first direct connection all the way down from Mexico up to Canada. And due to the fact that Canadian National Railway and myself believe 
that the cross North American trade will heavily increase throughout the time, I think it's a really good deal all through. It's super, super expensive. And now let's go to another point that I personally think is super interesting. And this is dividend reinvestment programs. I'm not sure whether Canadian National Railway actually has one, but I want to show you something. So guys, here we are at the dividend reinvestment calculator. And I do type in 102 shares we're currently owning. And the initial stock price one was $135. And the annual dividend they pay is, so I always look that data up at the stock exchange. And we can see here they're paying 60, 61.5 cents per three months, so per quarter. So in total, that's around $2.40. So we type in here $2.40. The dividend annual growth, I always type there in 8% or maybe 10 if a company has really showed that they're able to increase the dividend around 10%. But I always go lower than the actual increase was in the past because then I will have better performance if they're doing an outstanding uh increase in the dividends. I also type in the annual stock price growth of 8% a year. All through, we've got to mention, if we just have a look at trading view. So as Canadian National has mentioned, and they were totally right with that, since 2013, Canadian National has actually outperformed the market. But if we have a look at around 2015 to now, or even 17 to now, Canadian National has definitely underperformed the market. So don't always believe every word they show in their investor relation page. And another criteria, whether I buy a stock or not, is a long-term graph. So if a company goes from in the left bottom corner to the right bottom corner in a nice straight line as we have here. That's for me personally a bigger criteria to buy the stock than any numbers given in their investor relation, relation page because as mentioned earlier, financial engineering is an amazing thing. And the market is smart enough to know whether the price currently paid for the stock is right or not. And if the stock constantly moves from the left bottom corner to the right bottom corner, like an index over the long term should, I personally are super fine with buying the stock. But let's go back to our dividend reinvestment calculator. And then I say numbers of years, and then I go on calculate. Total value after those 10 years will be $35,000. I'll own around 121 shares. I'll have dividends of $4,200 if I reinvest the dividend. And if I do not do that, I miss over $2,000 in value. I miss over 19 shares. And I miss around... $400 in dividends. And that's something that annoys me. So I would always do dividend reinvestment because as Warren Buffett said, life is just compounding dividends and a snowball. And that's what it is all about. Because if we type in here 20 years, the difference becomes even more obvious of 91,000 to 76,000 and 15,000 in dividends compared to 12,000 in dividends. So with that said, I'm more than happy to move forward with Canadian National Railway. I'm more than happy to receive my first dividends from them pretty soon and reinvest that, buy new shares of the company. To be honest, I would, if possible, increase my positions 
in the company. It's the same with Canadian Pacific, but we will talk about Canadian Pacific in another video. And see you soon, guys. Please subscribe and please leave a like and comment what you think about Canadian National Railway. Do you think railway stocks have a future at all? Or do you think I'm just a dumb idiot and I should just buy the S&P and go to bed? Or buy some super nice tech company like GameStop or whatever. Bye, guys.